G'day, g'day, g'day. This is Charlie and I'm coming to you today from my locals community with your daily dose of business inspiration. Come on over and join me at askcharlieletham.locals.com. You can join the community for free. You can become a contributor and get access to contributor only or supporter only so you can become a supporter and get access to supporter only content. You can join the conversations. You can start your own conversations. And of course, your donation also or your contribution also helps me keep creating content like this, like my interview podcasts and like my tutorials. Today, I want to talk about topic number 170, the importance of emotional intelligence. Yes, I can hear some of you who've been watching this podcast for a while say, Charlie, you've already done this. Yeah, I have. I'm going to keep doing these topics because these topics are important to being successful in business. And in a short six to 10 minute video, I can't cover it all. So I'm just going to keep on covering it and hopefully we'll dig into some of it. Maybe someone will ask me to do a little bit more or maybe someone will offer to come on to my other podcast, my interview podcast, and we can talk about it in depth there. Let's get going though. So what is EI and why is it important? So emotional EI, emotional intelligence, there we go. I already did it. Jargon. Well done, Charlie. Emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage our own emotions and to recognize, understand, and influence the emotions of others. Gee, I hate that. I'm going to say that right now. How many of you, when I got to and influence, went, ooh, isn't that a horrible thing? It's not about influencing, okay? It's about helping shape the behaviors within the workplace to be a positive interaction. It's about helping people interact positively in, in this case, in the workplace, but in your life in general. I really hate saying we're going to influence someone because it sounds like we're going to, it sounds a negative thing to me. What do you guys think? Does that sound negative to you? There are several aspects to understanding your emotional intelligence and to what goes to make up emotional intelligence. It's self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Now, some of us are going to be going, well, we are done because we don't have any social skills or we're not particularly empathetic or hmm, motivation's a bit low. That's possible. But once you understand that these are the things that are required, these are now things that you can start working on to help build your emotional intelligence, right? Why is emotional intelligence, EI, important in your business? Well, first of all, it helps your communication, doesn't it? If you can understand your teams and understand the motivation of your individual team members. It's going to help you communicate better with them. It's going to help you collaborate better with them. It's going to help you with your leadership because if you're good at communicating with your teams and you're good at understanding what motivates them and if you're good at understanding the things that are driving them, then your leadership is going to improve just, just naturally as a, revolt, as a result of it. And then there's conflict resolution. And again, it comes down to the same thing. If you understand the drivers behind your team members, the things that drive each of your individual team members and the teams themselves, you're going to be able to address the conflicts that are going to arrive, in, in, inevitably arise within the workplace. I'm not talking about, you know, full-on fisticuff type conflicts. I'm going to talk about the he said this, or she's doing this, or this isn't happening, and I'm not happy, those types of conflicts. So when, now that you understand what AI is and why it's beneficial to your workplace, let's talk about how you develop it. Now, I want to give you a story here. Um, The story I'm going to give you is another one from my, 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 my own experience and it's another one from when I was a very young salesperson. Um, yeah, I was young once, believe it or not. We had a really dynamic team in one of the organizations I worked with. And when I say really dynamic team, the entire office got on really, really well and we were on fire. We were... Mate, we were hitting goals. We were out there having fun. Um, the sales team got on with the delivery team or the support team. The support team got on with the admin team. The admin team got on with everyone. Uh, now, it wasn't to say that there weren't 
individual issues or there weren't issues arise, but we were as a whole just this really great place to work. So much so that some of us had been there for a very long time. I ended up spending 10 years in this organization. Other people had spent five to eight years. Like, and this is in, in, a, in an industry where 18 months was your, um, we, we, was your, your timeline for a, for a, for, for staying with an organization. So we loved this group. But what was ending up happening is as people were moving on, we'd have to fill, fill roles. And people were coming into those roles and they just weren't fitting into the team and we could see the cohesiveness re reducing and the people just became de unmotivated or demotivated. They didn't want to be there anymore. Uh, and it was actually quite depressing to watch happen. Now, I was really lucky that I had a really great boss. And what he ended up doing was saying, okay, we're going to change our recruiting process. We're not just going to recruit off of the resumes and do interviews and see who's the best fit for the role. What we're going to do is we're going to do the initial cut. We're going to have a look at those resumes and see who looks good. And then when we do the interviews, we're going to have one of everyone from every member of the team, so every group of the team, in on those interviews and we would sit down as a group and start to talk to these people. These people are like, why are there five people in it? Well, there's five groups you're going to have to work with. We need to know whether uh, whether this is going to be a good fit. And this isn't just about, you know, whether you're a good fit for the role. It's about whether you're a good fit for the team as well. And we were very upfront about it. It fixed the problem. Like it was fantastic because the people that wanted to come and work with us at that point, once we started doing those sorts of things, were like, hey, I really like this. And because we had so, like we had a diverse group of opinions about whether someone was a good fit or not and why they weren't a good fit or not, we, we ended up with people that were, it was fantastic. Now, it wasn't that they were all the same either, but it was really good and like I said, I spent 10 years in that organization. It, it was fantastic. Okay, so there's my story. Long story. Sorry, I'll try to do them quicker in future. But that's why emotional intelligence and understanding emotional intelligence in the business is really important. But how do you develop it? Well, the first thing you need to do is practice your self-awareness. Reflect on your own emotions, your own re reactions, responses to situations. How does, how do how do your emotions impact your behavior and your decisions? You've really got to be mindful of that. And you see, we talk about mindful and being being aware of yourself, being self-aware and being mindful. You you're going to have to work on your empathy. You need to really start to understand others' perspectives and emotions. You may not agree with them and that's okay, but try to understand at least where someone is coming from when conflict uh, raises its head or when they say, I'm not happy with this. Try to understand their own their perspective. Try to understand their emotions. And you've got to start strengthening your social skills. You need to start working on your active listening. So active listening Two ears, two eyes, one mouth. Use them in those ratios, please. So when someone's talking to you, you're actually listening to them. You're not thinking about what you're going to say next. You're not going to think about, you're not thinking about how you're going to refute what they're saying. You're listening to what they're saying. That may mean that you need to pause for a little when they finish and say, give me a moment. Okay, now let me, let me address a few things here. That is active listening. Clear communication. Practice your communication. Give me a moment. Okay, let's break this down. I heard this, this, and this. Let's talk about this and start going through things. But be clear in your communication and really learn how to get on with people. Learn how to build rapport with others. You may not necessarily like someone, but you do have to work with them. That's just the way it is in the in, 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 in business world, in, in, in the working world. So learn how in a in a work environment how you can build rapport and and help develop that emotional intelligence so you, that you can be successful. You need to do this with your team members. You need to do it with yourself. You need to do it with your business partners and you need to do it with your suppliers. It's not just good enough to do it within your team. You need to actually look at your entire organization and roll out this approach across the board. I guarantee you, you will not regret doing it. 
What do you guys think? I mean, have you actually looked at your emotional intelligence in your business? Have you looked at how it's affecting you? Have you looked at how you're implementing it? Do you Did you understand it? Do you understand it? Is this something new to you? Come across to Locals. Ask charlieletham.locals.com. Join the conversation there. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your questions. Let me know what you you found yourself. Share your own perspectives and your own experiences. I'd love to hear them. Also, please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell so you find out when I drop more content. Maybe share this this video with someone who need you think might who needs to hear it. Someone who you might think might benefit from it. Please leave a review if you can. I really would appreciate it. It does help. Every little bit helps. Every little bit of thing that you can do helps this podcast get out there to more people. And tomorrow I will see you for episode number 171, Building a Personal Brand. See you all tomorrow. Bye.